In this video, we're going to use examples to discuss what makes good writing styles for engineering students. If you'd just like a brief overview on the topic, then see our other shorter video. Writing style is acting in an appropriate way for the context. In this video, we're particularly focusing on engineering students studying at a British university. Using an appropriate style gives our work authority. However, an inappropriate style um, can distract the reader and make them take our work less seriously. Style is getting a balance between, on the one hand, being too informal, and this is the area that students are more often aware of, and on the other hand, um, trying to be too formal, um, which is a, a danger area that many students fall into. You need to try and strike a middle ground um, and have a professional um, style. So first we're going to look at informality. Pause the video to read the three examples that are given on this slide. Think about how the examples could be improved and then we'll discuss them together. In the first video, what in the first slide, one of the main problems is vague language. The, section, the first section that I've highlighted in red reads, the range of application of these batteries varies as mentioned before. This is quite wordy and doesn't really um, clearly get to the point. I think this could be rephrased um, more clearly as I have done below in blue to say, as mentioned, secondary batteries power many applications such as. The other problem is the use of the word things. Words such as things, stuff, anything, something are far too vague um, and don't carry um, real meaning, precise meaning. It's important in our writing to be precise and direct. We need to avoid vague language and also um, avoid waffling or writing without direction, which was the problem at the start. The second example had problems of being too chatty or using personal language. Um, you can see here the section I've highlighted in red, it's just a matter of getting into the car and driving anywhere. This sounds like something that you'd hear in spoken language. In particular, just a matter of sounds like a spoken phrase. Also, we usually avoid contractions such as it's we would normally write in full, it is. Engineering writing needs to be formal and professional. You may have heard it be described as be, um, being removed or objective. In the third example, the problem was unnecessary repetition of the same word or words from the same word family. And you can see that I've highlighted these here propulsion, propulsion, propellant, propulsion, propellant. This needs to be rephrased to avoid such repetition. It's okay to repeat sentences and keywords across sentences. Indeed, this is good to help create cohesion and for the, uh, the sentences to flow. But within a sentence, you should very rarely repeat um, the same word. If you'd like more information about informality, then um, see Bailey's book about writing as an international student. For um, students at Southampton University, this book is available as an e-book via Webcat. Some other um, points briefly to mention about informality are emotional or dramatic language, such as luckily, um, unfortunately, or personal language such as we and our. However, um, take care with this as increasingly personal language is being used. So it's um, to try and observe writing around you. The other one is two word verbs such as go down, which would often be um, written as a single word with the same meaning reduce. Another one is um, starting sentences with coordinated or the short linking words such as for and nor but or yet so after a sentence. In academic writing, you wouldn't usually start a sentence with one of these short linking words 
would start a sentence with a longer linking word with the same meaning, such as however, or join two independent clauses after a comma with one of the short um, linking words. The next area I'd like to look at is the other extreme of not being too formal but being too formal and forced formality. Again, we've got three examples here. Um, please pause the video to read the examples, think about how they could be improved, and then we will um, talk, talk about them a bit. So the first example, the problem is excessive um, nominalization. Nominalization is when you turn a verb into a noun. So here um, we have the verb comparison, which is from, so we have the noun comparison, which is from the verb to compare. This has been changed into a noun, um, presumably to try and make it sound more formal. However, it, it ma makes it unnecessarily um, wordy and just a bit harder to process. This sentence could have been rephrased um, as I have done in blue, as follows. Using this data, types of electric propulsion can be compared. The meaning hasn't changed, but it's actually a bit simpler to read. It's important to remember that you're not writing to impress. You're writing to communicate clearly. Um, you want your readers to focus on your ideas, um, not on the language in particular. The next example um, has problems of wordiness. As, it, as we've got in red, are in use in order to. This could simply be rephrased um, as are used to. This might not seem like a, a big deal, but if you're looking at a piece of writing of thousands of words, this kind of wordiness and inefficiency in writing, um, it's like an irritating background noise that can make it harder for the reader to process what you're saying. Sometimes students believe that um, the more, more words they use, the better it sounds and they don't want their writing to be too simple. However, it's important to remember that clarity um, is the key and you don't want to, to reach a word limit by waffling, you want to get there by, in, in, by covering important points. So it's important to avoid unnecessarily wordy phrases such as in order to, which could have been written as to, unnecessarily pompous or showy language for example initiate rather than start and although we said earlier in informality about when we're talking about informality that it's important to use the passive at times it's also important not to overuse the passive and we're going to talk about that um, more we've got undertaken and measurement so the real verb could have been measure but instead this was changed into a noun and a, and a kind of um, unnecessary verb undertaken was added in. If you'd like more information about the forced formality, then here are some um, resources that you can look at. So just to recap, we have talked about um, writing style for engineers and how to get a balance between being too informal and forced formality. In terms of being too informal, it's important to avoid vague language, but instead to be direct and um, precise. You need to avoid emotional or um, excessively strong language. You should avoid being too chatty or using personal language, although this is an area where we are be seeing um, change and it really depends on the type of document you're writing. You should avoid two word verbs when there is a single word, that, a single verb that carries the same meaning. You should avoid the short linking words after the full stop. Instead, you can use them after a comma or you can put a full stop and a longer linking word that has the same meaning. And avoid repeating yourself within a sentence, although it is okay to repeat, and indeed you should, repeat keywords across sentences. We said that another risk was being too formal, and this included um, changing too many um, verbs into nouns. You also need to be careful not to use um, 
unnecessarily wordy phrases instead to be as um, efficient as you can. You shouldn't try to write to impress, instead you should write for clarity and to get your message across. And we looked at, although we, we often use the passive to avoid informality, we shouldn't take this too far um, and distort the passive. So we said that appropriate writing, academic writing should be precise, it should be direct, it should be concise, and it should be clear.